Good evening. This board, this meeting of the Board of Education for September 16th, 2013 is called to order. Our first two speakers, Dr. Martin Paul and Mary Callahan. I'm Martin L. Paul. I'm Professor Emeritus of Biochemistry and Basic Medical Sciences at Washington State University. I've been a Portland resident for the last five years, and I've been working on environmental medicine since about the year 2000. I've received seven major international honors for my work in that area, and I gave a copy of those to one of the school board members. Uh, and I'll be receiving an eighth uh, at the end of next month uh, in the U.S. And uh, I published, okay, so, uh, so I'm talking about the issue of the safety or lack of safety of EMF exposures. And I published a paper on that a couple of months ago that's been a, a real paradigm shift. Um, let me just say that the situation before that paper was published is that people have been assuming that the only thing that electromagnetic fields can do is to heat things, like heating things in your microwave oven. And yet, and, and, and what we know now, and in fact there was evidence before, before my paper was written on this, a lot of evidence, is that that's simply not true. What EMFs do in our bodies is they work on, on, on some uh, channels in the plasma membranes of our cells called voltage-gated calcium channels. And what they do is they open up those channels, calcium flows into the cell, and it's the excess calcium in the cell that leads to all the biological effects that are produced by EMFs. So all of the assessments of safety which have been based on the assumption that all, uh, the only thing that, that these fields can do is heat things are based on a falsehood, okay? We know that now. And, and let me just say that the reason we know that is because you can block these EMF effects with uh, drugs that block those channels. Now those drugs have lots of side effects, so they're difficult to use clinically, but they're very useful scientifically. Okay. now. Um, when you have this situation then where excessive activity of these channels is what, what the EMFs produce, then of course you immediately ask, okay, what kinds of diseases can be produced by excessive activity of those channels? And so I've just started looking at that issue over the last two months. I just sent a paper off making a very strong arguments that autism is one of them. Why is that? Well, we know, first of all, that autism incidences have been going up very rapidly, paralleling the uh, exposures to EMF fields, right? Everybody knows that. Um, and there is now evidence from some studies of, of a, a mutant called Timothy syndrome that, uh, sorry, am I three minutes up? Okay. Okay, so let me just say that autism's one of them. We know that. Um, a, a second one is type 2 diabetes. A third one is a, the kind of cardiovascular disease that has to do with the electrical control in the heart. And the fourth we won't talk about. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Mary Callahan, the author of the Constitutional Argument in Morrison v. Portland Public Schools. I'm here to talk about legacy, mine and yours. My legacy charges me as a Hanford Nuclear Reservation downwinder survivor and as the daughter of a Marine Raider who volunteered to rescue victims of Nagasaki at Ground Zero. My legacy charges me with no less duty than the defense of another generation of innocents forcibly exposed to atomic radiation. You call it Wi-Fi. It's a cute marketing term. But wireless radiation cannot shed its radiation identity because that is what it is. While as a nuclear engineering student at the Oregon State University, I learned what the American trial lawyers now stand behind, that wireless radiation health effects are equatable to the same disease and latency as that from nuclear radiation exposure. In fact, this, this biggest trial lawyer association in the world, called the, now called the American Association for Justice, just last week has thrown down the gauntlet to federal agencies in the wireless industry that big telecom and wireless will go the way of big tobacco, of asbestos, and of lead paint litigation. Meanwhile, players like Cisco, Apple, AT&T promise any comers on school boards in local IT departments that they too can have a personal legacy building path. Just walk with us, they say. 
that you too can have a share of wireless pork barrel kickbacks from big telecoms gaming of the U.S. Department of Education's e-programs. All you have to do is turn a blind eye, believe in the fable of harmlessness sold to you as a cost-benefit value-add sales pitch fed to your MBI IT guy, I call him the decider. This decider for all of you who not only has no biosciences, who has no health training, but professes in deposition on your record that he doesn't even have a curiosity about the health effects of, of wireless radiation, and anyway, he doesn't believe in it, as if his confession were some sort of religion of, for efficiency on your balance sheets. So this is your legacy. Like the emperor who has no clothes, you will have stood on the sidelines of, in a fable, while the wireless industry has paraded their naked untruths and misinformation, have trotted out their doubt about Wi-Fi wi health effects on children in schools, as if Wi-Fi is magic that floats through the air like butterflies, but Wi-Fi is not magic and the emperor has no clothes. It took 27 years for my dad to die from Nagasaki. It took 35 years to figure out about Hanford Downwinders. And Wi-Fi radiation predicted by those who know will follow this same latency period in disease. Your legacy will be on the wrong side of this science, on the wrong side of history, on the wrong side even of 60,000 pediatricians who have recently sent a letter to Congress begging them to stop this exposure of children to a class 2B carcinogen, an agent the same as DDT, lead, and gasoline paint in fumes. No kid will escape, escape this Russian roulette you are playing with their lives and their future. So why did I come to get today to talk about legacy in three minutes or less? My legacy will stand in history. I ask the question, will yours?